Friends, welcome to the Oxfordshire Community Hub. We are delighted to have with us as our guest, the Right Reverend Bishop Colin Fletcher, OBE, Bishop of Dorchester. Bishop Colin, welcome to the Oxfordshire Community Hub. Thank you very much, Monoa. It is lovely to be with you. What does being a bishop mean and what kind of role is it? It's an extraordinarily varied role. Um, I mean, at, at the root, I am uh, have day-to-day -day responsibility for basically most of rural Oxfordshire. Uh, the Bishop of Oxford is my boss, as it were, and his uh, diocese extends across the Thames Valley. So it includes uh, Milton Keynes, Berkshire and Buckinghamshire as well as Oxfordshire and uh, he also looks after the city of Oxford on a day-to-day -day basis but I do the rest of the uh, the county as far as Church of England is concerned so that's um, somewhere around 300 parishes and churches it's uh, lots of clergy but um, alongside the clergy of course it's the people and uh, in the Church of England's understanding as the established church, we have a responsibility for everybody who lives within uh, those boundaries. And they can choose to have children baptised, they can choose under normal circumstances to be married in church, and to have their funeral service from the church. So it's, uh, it's a job that is there for everybody, and I love that part of it. And how long have you been a bishop? And at what point in your life did you decide, you know, the, the kind of, this is the path that I'm going to follow? Uh, well, I've been Bishop of uh, Dorchester now uh, for almost 20 years. In October, it will be 20 years exactly. Uh, the day I'm retiring uh, will be when I've been 20 years in post. Um, I mean, woe betide you if you ever set out to say, I'm going to become a bishop. That's <laughs> most unwise. Uh, what you do is you say to yourself, as I did, I believe that God may be calling me to be ordained within the Church of England. And then it's just been a story from that. So I've, I've been a vicar. I've been a curate in a local church. I've been... Uh, uh, a tutor in a theological college, uh, and I've been chaplain to the Archbishop of Canterbury. So I've uh, had a very varied route, um, but uh, it was 20 years ago, just over, that Bishop Richard Harris said, would you like to become Bishop of Dorchester? Uh, and I was uh, excited uh, by that invitation, and I've remained excited ever since. I could have retired several years ago but it's far too much fun being Bishop of Dorchester. Well, <laughs> fun's a relative term. There are moments uh, when it's not so much fun, but most of the time, it's just enormously uh, energizing. So, Colin, how, how was it like being uh, the uh, chaplain to the Archbishop of Canterbury? I mean, that, that's a huge responsibility and a very exciting role. It, it was, it was an again, an extraordinary mix. So I was the member of staff working with George Carey, who saw more of his ministry in all its different aspects than anyone else working on his staff did. Um, so others would be more expert at oh, uh, global developments and global relationships, but I would go on many of the uh, trips around the world with him. So that meant, uh, meant some quite, quite extraordinary moments. I think of being in, in Cape Town when Archbishop Desmond Tutu uh, was retiring. Uh, and there were the leaders, both of the old South Africa, as it were, uh, de Klerk and the others, along with the leaders of the new South Africa, uh, Nelson Mandela, all there to be with, uh, with Desmond. And uh, there were many other occasions uh, in many parts of the world. So. Uh, I did that. I did quite a lot in this country. And in my latter years, uh, I was particularly asked by the Archbishop uh, to focus on the Millennium celebrations and how faith fitted into those, uh, both from a Church of England point of view, 
but much more widely. Um, so I co-chaired something called the Lambeth Group, which brought together um, both uh, the royal household uh, and government, but also uh, key um, leaders from the Muslim, Jewish, Sikh, Hindu, and other faith communities. And that was an immense privilege. Mm. And in terms of, um, I, I know from my own experience that you've, you've been a Bishop of Oxford on, on uh, at least two occasions. Um, and how, how might that role have varied from being the, the Bishop of Dorchester? I mean, it's a vast area, isn't it? The, the, the Diocese of Oxford is, is the whole of the Thames Valley. So, uh, Yes, it is. Um, uh, I mean, one of the very good things is that um, we do have this system where the area bishops, so my colleagues, the Bishop of Buckingham and the Bishop of Reading, look after their particular areas. And so that just continued as it was. Um, I did get some extra responsibilities in the city itself. And then um, pulling together the team, and working with the whole team. Um, so uh, the thing I was determined to do was not lose touch with the Dorchester area. Mm. It's what I didn't want to do. And the last time, well, this very last time I was acting Bishop of Oxford was just for under, just under three months when Bishop Stephen was on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. The previous time when we were waiting for a new one to be appointed after Bishop John Pritchard and before Bishop Stephen came, uh, that went on for the best part of two years. Uh, and what I couldn't do and didn't want to do was lose touch with the people who I'd built relationships with for by then uh, best part of 15 years. Uh, you don't walk out on them and say, oh, I'm off to be Bishop of Oxford for a bit. Mm. Uh, so it it became pretty tiring at times, but um, uh, yeah, it seemed to work on the whole uh, yeah. and um, I, I enjoyed it. And in, in, in terms of, um, you know, if you've been a Bishop of, of Dorchester for 20 years, you've had you know, the, the role as chaplain to the Archbishop of Canterbury, um, uh, been an acting bishop for, for Oxford. Um, are there moments, um, you know, I, I know there will be many moments, but maybe three key moments, um, uh, abiding memories, as it were, that have really struck with you and, and were somehow really important for you? Really difficult one to uh, give a sensible answer on that one. Uh, one would undoubtedly be when I was ordained bishop in Westminster Abbey. That was a that was a great day, uh, mm. and bringing the uh, bringing the whole family together and friends and uh, fellow bishops and everybody else. That was a very special day. Uh, I think I'm going to cheat, Monoir. Uh, uh, some of the things I most love are, uh, actually repeat themselves. So uh, something that I know you know about is the annual gathering which we have in Dorchester Abbey for deputy lieutenants with the mayors of our various towns and the Lord Mayor uh, of the city and the uh, chairs of many, many of our councils coming together to eat together and then to pray together at the start of the civic year. Uh, sadly, we're going to have to uh, find another way to do that. Um, I hope not by a virtual meal. I hope we find space to have a proper meal at some stage. Um, but that, that's always very special. And uh, why is that so special? Because it's, it's about linking to the whole community. As I said earlier, um, I believe I'm here as bishop for all not just for those who happen to turn up at Church of England uh, churches, uh, be that occasionally or be that regularly. I, I'm here for all and building those relationships with the wider community is really important. Uh, and then moving away from that, that broad sweep, um, just it, it's going into lots and lots of different rural communities week by week sometimes with quite small congregations. Mm. Um, but uh, I'm endlessly fascinated uh, by people. Sometimes 
people will say to me, Bishop, what's the best thing about being a bishop? I say people. Uh, and then it usually happens at primary school where I've said that as an assembly. Uh, and then someone will say, ah, but Bishop, what's the worst thing about being a bishop? <laughs> to which I say people. Uh, <laughs> because uh, it's when people fall out and so on, usually quite unnecessarily, uh, that life gets a bit, uh, a bit tedious, to be honest. Um, and, uh, but hey, uh, this is about being human and that's who we are. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I, I know from my own uh, experience and having worked with you, you've, you've put so much energy and time into building uh, interfaith relationships. And we've had some really moving events. Um, and, and I just wonder whether you could say a word or two about why you feel that's really important as well, building relationships with all the communities and especially interfaith. Uh, relationships. And at that point I'm going to embarrass you, Monoa, because one of the most recent of those events, uh, well, just before lockdown, was when we all gathered together to see you uh, being presented uh, with a certain medallion from the Sternberg <laughs> Foundation. And that was great. Um, so, um, theologically, why do I believe it's important? Because I believe all human beings are loved by God. And um, that's, uh, that's a sort of baseline I start off with. Uh, mm -hmm. And that I will never meet anybody who is not loved by God. Mm -hmm. um, secondly was, I've mentioned this already, my experience at the millennium with all the planning for that. And there were some remarkable people. Uh, I think of Iqbal Sukrani and Indrajit Singh, Neville Nagla. Um, various others, and they were, they were remarkable people to work with, and uh, a real pleasure. Uh, and the other thing about interfaith is the thing that binds us together is we all believe, um, I mean, our, our beliefs vary, but we all believe in something beyond um, this world, uh, a greater uh, spirit, a God, um, uh, the, words, the words differ. But um, there's, there's something that binds us together because um, we have the privilege of having that bigger shaping to our lives. I, I, I don't say that as a proud in pride. Uh, agnostics and atheists, um, I have met and talked with many of them in my life and value them. But there is something special about talking with our fellow believers and finding that when I talk with a, oh, I don't know, a Jew or a Muslim about the struggles they have in prayer, they echo many of the struggles I have with prayer. So uh, th there's a commonality there that I really value. No, thank you. And I mean, at a time when we're going through such a difficult time, um, um, and people um, really confined to their homes, uh, what are you finding works for you? What's, what, what, what have you found has, has helped to, to you know, carry on each day and, and remain positive? Um, one is to try and maintain, or I'm trying to maintain, many of the, the normal rhythms. So I'm, I'm getting up at about the same time. I'm praying about the same time. Um, I'm in my study at at certain times I'm not in my study at certain times and I try not to let the email totally dominate the whole of existence um, so so that's part of it it's just maintaining those rhythms of life uh, and in the meantime of course uh, zoom and teams <laughs> I am I have taken technological strides I am way behind the curve and it's so nice to be working with um, all sorts of people are way ahead of me in terms of their technological uh, uh, adroitness. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm excited by the possibilities. I think after this is over, uh, we'll probably have less meetings where people feel that they have to drive miles to gather together. And that has an effect on uh, our, our carbon footprint, which could be good. 
I still think we need face-to-face -face meetings because mm. um, you want to see the whole of a person, not just their top half. Mm. Um, but um, I think there's some interesting things there. I think there's some really interesting things, seeing how many um, uh, churches are now live streaming. Uh, what will that mean for our housebound uh, folk and those in residential homes? Mm. How nice if uh, they can learn to be, to be on stream um, with their local parish church and feel still very much part of it. So sad when people who are housebound feel that they're no longer a part of the church. And I think mm. there's a lot we can learn. I think it's uh, when we emerge from this, and it is horrible at the moment, we're going to have learnt lots and lots of things. And um, the other thing I'm noticing, of course, is uh, both for me and for others, it, it's, it's pulling out the absolute best of our communities. So every day I'm getting reports in from clergy and others who are saying, we're doing this in our parish, we're doing that in our town, uh, our village has organized this and they're keeping to the government guidelines, but goodness me, are they supporting each other? Mm. And it's really great. Yes, I think that's one of the things that's really struck me as well, the, the goodness that's come out at such a dark time, at such a difficult uh, time. And I, I suppose it's sort of, that's just human nature that, you know, uh, when we're in difficulties, we realize the common humanity that we have. Uh, yes, it's, it's so important. And we are still in the early stages. And I've, I've said to quite a few people, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And there's going to come a time when we really need to support each other uh, in an odd way, even more than, than now, because we'll be tired. I mean, one of the things I've noticed with this, I think it's the effect of a trauma, actually, mm. that I'm more tired than usual. Uh, and it, it's, as well as being energizing, it's actually very sapping some of what we're going through at the moment. And we just need to take care of ourselves and take care of others. Really mm. important. Well, that's reminded me of um, something. One of, uh, there's a small collection of, it's called uh, um, uh, Letters of a Sufi Master. And, um, and, and the act of going to sleep and rest, uh, the, 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 the sheikh, he says that it's you handing yourself over to God again. Oh, how lovely. You know, yeah. and, and that sometimes things just become so hard for us, that, that the burden is such that it's all right to have a have a have a kip, have a, have a sleep, and 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 I, I thought that's such a wonderful way that don't don't sometimes I think we're we're kind of used to product, product productivity, aren't we? Oh yes. You know, uh, these are our targets. We've got to meet them, and but just to hand ourselves over to God and just to have a, have have some sleep and have some rest and heal our bodies and and our souls. Um, it, it's just. You know, so you've just, just reminded me of that. And, and there's one, one of the Psalms that I quite often quote to myself if, uh, if I'm funny. Uh, one of those occasions when there's a lot on my mind, as you say, um, and there's a Psalm that says, he gives to his beloved sleep. Um, God gives to his beloved sleep. Not that I am more beloved particularly than anybody else, but because God loves us all. It is one of his supreme gifts, is sleep. And uh, that's great. Doesn't always work, but does quite often. So, so finally, um, at a time of, of, of such difficulty and unprecedented times, um, what would your message be to, to people listening uh, to the Oxygen Community Hub? Um, uh, first of all, a huge thank you. I don't know the individuals who are going to be watching this and listening to it, but a huge thank you uh, to everybody who is doing so much to support uh, their neighbours uh, around the uh, around the whole of the county at the moment. It is it is fantastic what's going on, um, and within that, uh, stay safe. Don't take unnecessary risks. Um, one of the challenges we have is many of our volunteers are themselves uh, of a certain age 
or may have certain medical conditions that would put them at risk. Uh, and don't feel guilty. I think one of the things that's going to emerge from this is um, lots and lots of new volunteers discovering the joy of volunteering, uh, which has been a bit of a struggle um, in the county over recent years. Um, and clearly it's going to be a really tough time getting the, uh, the whole economy back to work and getting people back to work again. Uh, and people aren't going to have a huge amount of time. But if we have learned things about uh, volunteering and supporting each other, that will be great. And that, um, as the theme of uh, our next uh, service of prayer from uh, faith leaders is, it, it's about hope. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can have hope in the midst even of the grimmest times. There is always hope uh, because God is a God of hope. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Bishop Colin, for, for joining us. Um, and may I also just say thank you for the friendship. Thank you for your work for the county, for, for, for God's uh, children, you know. Um, and and but in particular your work in building strong relationships and you've been there uh whenever things have been really difficult um and you've been there as a huge support so thank you very much and keep well uh, and take care thank you very much